Today's talk is about exercising. Okay, we exercise to improve our walking posture, how we walk, how we help our body get strong in that position, how we improve also our strength and balance. When we walk properly, we do certain things to walk properly, our body can go from, if you're in a wheelchair or a walker, into more of a capable ambulatory state where you can I have patients that have gone from walker to a cane to no devices at all. Patients that have gone from a walker to a cane where they feel comfortable on their own, they'll still get, still get a cane out to public so they feel safe. Beyond that, they feel good overall. People that actually do walk already, they feel like they're walking with more, more fluidity, if that's a word, more of a rhythm to it, and more of a smoother walk. Some people, when they walk, they walk very rough where they really stop their feet. How do we get our body to slowly learn about three exercises to start doing and compound those together to walk, train our brain, to have a nice smooth walk in the proper position so we don't wear ourselves out for one and hurt ourselves. I see people every day when I come down to Euclid for work, they're walking like this. Okay? They walk like this, leaning, bending forward, but also walking with their head down. Again, which obviously is trying to protect themselves from falling, hurt their pride by stepping in a rock and rolling their ankle. Yeah. The problem is you walk leaning forward with your head down, you're reinforcing that posture. You have to get our body to learn how this works better when you're standing up straight weight, weight on your heels, for example, body up looking down over your nose, so your body maintains an upright structure posture so the spine can handle that load normally and not wear itself out. We just start leaning forward because of our work, because of how much we drive, because of our position when we exercise. Our body sees that as it's normal, and it reinforces this posture, hunching forward, versus being straight up and down. Okay, our moms, our aunts, uncles, our elders always told to stand up straight. But what did that mean? Okay, I'm going to show you what that means right now. Any questions so far? Nothing? It makes my job my easier. My mother used to show me how to stand up straight by whacking me on the back. It does. Whacking does work once in a yeah, while, but it's because of right political correctness and tolerance, I guess, they've gone away from that for some reason. I don't know why. It still works, but some people don't like that abuse, they call it. So, to so start, what I want to do is stand and use a wall for balance. Okay, so I do my patients. I'm doing, I'm going to post a video, I think next week or two weeks, of Bill, and he is 93 years old. He went from a walker, very sed sedative, very incoherent somewhat, mentally, physically, where now he walks with a cane once in a while, walks on his own, no help, no assistance, and mentally, physically all there. A lot more alert. It works together, I'll go with what that means down the line. Okay, so remind me, because I'll forget, because I'm getting a little bit older. Okay. So what do you start with? To get your posture upright, to check where your body is. You have some patients that are 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years old. Hello, sir. Right. What I do is have go against the wall with your heels, yeah. hips, shoulders, and head. And don't make sure there's nothing against the wall. There's against me right now, so I'm going to move over here. Heels, hips, shoulders, and head against the wall. Let your shoulders, back of your shoulders, at the outside of your shoulders, hit the wall. And get your hands to rotate forward so your palms are facing out away from you. Okay? That's a normal relaxed standing posture. That doesn't feel good to you. What feels tight? What feels like you're forcing that head back maybe, okay? Do your calves feel like it's being hard to push yourself back? If our body isn't used to a wall type of posture, we're sitting in a posture normal standard position, over time what happens is our body can lean forward. When you come off the wall, we lose our balance by leaning forward. We stay here more. So you gotta train our brain to start with how to get our body back here. This is normal. So you your elbows are. You want your elbows against the wall if you can, and hands coming forward as a normal resting posture where your body's here. Here my body feels relaxed and not being forced in position. I could fall asleep this way, hypothetically speaking, if I was really tired, but I'm not that tired. I took a nap earlier, so I'm ready to go. All right? Who wants to be my demonstratee? Anybody? Yes? That's still warming up? Yeah. Come on over. Yes, I, I like the... Like the new, new, what's your name again? Well, it's a little bit shy. Shy? Mm -hmm. Well, good, shy. Come on over. You're not shy today. Well, I need this. This is why you're here, right? Let's make sure we take care of you then. Okay. So, so against the well, wall here? Now you got the shoulders. I'm going to show you right now. Up against the wall here. Heels, hips, shoulders, and head. Adjust the camera a little bit if you don't mind. Okay. 
Does that feel good to you? No, So what I'm going to do is have you do is drop your shoulders down. Here, if you don't mind if I touch your shoulders. Mm -hmm. And from there, does that feel okay to you? Okay. Okay. From that position, now can you, I'm going to hold your shoulders down. Can you bring your head back? What I mean by that, Shy, is bring your chin straight back here. She leaning sideways a little bit? A little bit. A little bit. Does that feel okay? Yeah. Okay. I want to focus on this first. The problem is, not the problem, is, the thing is, when we're leaning forward, our body will naturally curve to one side also to compensate to maintain our center of gravity. So what we want to do is as we bring our head and shoulders back here like you're doing right now, Shy, allows your body to, to minimize that lateral bend to one side also. Exactly. Shoulders back, hips touching, feet touching, correct? Heels touching. There we go. So it's, it's what, I, what I do in some of the patient's videos, how to remember to do this, but over time it becomes a habit we do it every day. You see my, my chin is, and my head is not touching. That's okay. We, and it really has, this is a normal standard posture. Wherever you are now, can you slowly go back a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time as we calibrate our posture. See, this is normal instead of what our body's used to. It takes time to change. Okay, if our ligaments and joints are used to this posture here, hunching forward, over time, we need time to stretch those ligaments and muscles out so it can accept this posture as normal. Wherever you can begin, start there to slowly come back. More. When you come back, Shai, what I want you to do is come back enough where that neck and shoulder here, the neck, it feels like it's tight but not too uncomfortable. Right about there is okay? Yeah, so start there. I can, I can feel my neck cracking. Okay, in the back, it's cracking the back of the neck? It's breaking up scar tissue. That's a good thing. Okay, if it wasn't, then I don't know. We'll figure something else out. Okay, take a step forward from that better position. Hold that position now while you do, Shai, is right there. And can you, does that feel comfortable to you? I am you now? Yes. Yes. Good. So bring the head and shoulders back more. Right there, so stay, stay off not the wall. Not the feet. Not the feet. Stay off the wall right there. And lean your shoulders back a little bit right there. Does that feel uncomfortable but still no. stable? It feels okay. Good. I like okay. I feel like I'm going to fall over. Good. You know why? Why? You feel like you're falling over because your body is used to this. This is in your mind is your straight. When you're hunching forward, where your body not hunching forward, where your body is right now, before I reset your posture, that's your normal standing, normal straight posture in your mind. We have to calibrate that mind posture to better standard posture over time. By moving this position, by moving this position, try this allows your body to change over time. Doesn't happen overnight, but if we can set our posture against the wall, say in the morning, afternoon, and evening, anytime we sit down or lie down, it gets feet against the wall exactly, shy. Shoulders and head. Bring your hands out like this a little bit, okay? And let your hands, leave, leave them relaxed, and bring them back against the wall here. There we go. Hold that for about 30 seconds at home with your head as far back where it feels uncomfortable. Shoulders, elbows hips and heels, that point for 30 seconds there, then come off the wall, so take a step forward for me, and try to hold that position and walk that way, your body will calibrate that posture faster. Two so to three weeks. Walk that way. Exactly. With my head back. Head back, but not with a grimace in your face, not the angry look. <laughs> Just relax face look, okay? <laughs> Just <pick. laughs> But you get it though. Can we feel uncomfortable? Because that's where our mind posture is right now, wherever we started before this exercise. At that point, get our body to a more of a standard posture by changing your posture over time when we feel uncomfortable. Then from there over time, feel normal. And that'll help the lateral bend you have right now too. Your body's used to, right now your body's used to this. Just get the body back here to minimize that posture. All right, any questions? Okay, I should touch my head. To the wall. You should bring your head back enough to where it feels uncomfortable, and over time it will touch the wall. Try not to really force it too much. Bring it back as far as I can bring it back. As far as bring it back where it still feels uncomfortable, not painful. Well, that would be about like that. Perfect. If it feels painful or too uncomfortable, your body will tighten up, so you can't change your posture. So you want to do enough to where it feels uncomfortable, but not where we're tightening up, because that minimizes motion. We need motion in our body to recalibrate our posture faster. And I was thinking about my shoulders. I'm going to show you your shoulders are right now. As long as they stay here, 
There we go. That's one to focus on. There, down, shoulders down, and rotated backwards. There we go. So these muscles in the back of your shoulder hold your posture. That's one to focus on. Get those shoulders back here so that back muscle wants to rotate the shoulder backwards. You know, there is an exercise that you do like this. Uh -huh. Is that a good one? It is. And even go against the wall for me, too. Let me show you the secondary exercise for the shoulders. So if you have hunched forward shoulders, right? They hunch forward a little bit because everyone does a little bit. What happens is the front muscles are tighter, the back muscles are weaker. You have to re we have to readjust that by reversing that position to make the front muscles stretch and the back muscles want to strengthen. To do that, what I want you to do is bring your hands, your elbows in, in against the wall, good right there. From there, I'm gonna, I'll demonstrate first, bring your hands out away from you. How does that feel? Where do you, where do you, when you hold it out there, do you feel the muscles back here tightening up? No, I feel in my arm. Supposed to say the back of the shoulder. We practiced this earlier. <laughs> so here again, so bring it back here and pinch the blades together here. There we go. Pinch those together. You feel that? Yeah. Good. Yeah, Good. So now bring your hands, hands relaxed and forward again. When you come back with a hand called the reverse wall fly, bring your elbows tucked in. Elbows back. There we go. Pinch shoulder blades together. That gets those muscles back here to get stronger. That pulls you back. So I do about when you go against the wall for that 30 seconds. Shy. I want you to do is do the exercise about five times. Bring it out. Hold it for a second and come in. Relax. Hold. Bring it out again. Hold it for a second and then come back in. How does should, that feel? Should the small of your back be yeah. flat on the wall? Or it should, if you can, if you get that, if not you, the small of your back, the lower back, should be more of a little bit of a fist uh, separation. You want to get the blades back here, to the shoulder blades to open, to close together, pinch them, and then come back in. Pinch, and then come back in. Do the work just as good sitting down? It is fine to sit down too if you want to do sitting down. I should feel a pinch. Right back here in the shoulder blades. We tightened up right there. There you go. Standing is good because standing allows your body to get used to that better position. Sitting is used to this position here. So standing allows you to sit back further, get your shoulders back against the wall, head back against the wall too. I feel it Because it's tight back. Because right now everything right here is real tight. As you do it more and more and feel that pinch back here, Shy, and at that point you'll feel this relax in the arms. And more the shoulders and upper back. How many times do I do that? Again? I would do it five times a day, but make sure we're doing shy is lock your elbows in first as much as you can and then come out. There we go. So your elbows don't, don't have to come all the way against the wall. I would because that allows your posture to stay straight. The goal of this is exercise and stretch and strengthen in a better posture position first and then move your joints. At that point, your body sets the posture, calibrates your brain faster by causing better motion that better position. I should do them at least five times a day. At least five times a day. In the morning and then five times a day. Exactly. The more you do it, the more it's going to calibrate you, it's going to move things faster. The longer you're still breathing, the muscles can get stronger and looser. Well, it feels okay. Yeah. Just make sure you pinch back here in the shoulder blades when you come out with the hands. Now take a step forward for me. And then get that better posture again. Does that feel easier or harder now? I do it's easier. Yeah. Your body will calibrate very quickly. By doing it often enough, it will recalibrate that brain to see that as your normal unconscious posture. You keep your fist I would keep them relaxed a little bit. At that point, it's more of back here in the shoulder blades where the more of the motion occurs. Yeah. Keep your fist tight. It's going to make more of the muscles here tighten up. Keep them more relaxed. Keep your hands relaxed then too. And I, and I have weights that I use. Yeah. 50 pound weights? What do you use in these days? <laughs> three pounds. Perfect. So maybe take your three pound weights, bring them out, hold it, then bring them back in. Keep do you, it. Do you with the I would start probably without the weights, just water bottles to start, just hand water bottles first. That feels good the first couple days. And then go to your weights. So don't worry yourself. Well, I have one pound weight. Then go to one pound weights. One pound weights is about a water bottle size. And then go to your three pound weights for comfortable. Does that feel good? Yeah. Good. All right. That's the plan. Let's go against the wall one more time. I want to show the audience one more thing. At that point, you'll make your 
I'll pay you later. You got my stars today, dang it. <laughs> got my stars. Here, I want you to do now is with your feet, is bring your feet a little bit more separate. I'll show you over here on this wall over here. Your feet separated about shoulder, about hip width. There we go. A little bit more with your left foot. Bring your left foot out. There we go. I want you to just focus on bringing your feet straight. Okay. A lot of people have problems when they when they walk. Their side muscles get tighter. So what happens is we pull our feet out, we point it outwards instead of being forward. That makes the back of your hips here push in to counter and makes your body lean forward also, again to reinforce this hunched over forward posture. You get our body to open itself up and the hips get your body back up, your overall upper body back up, you want your feet to be straight the whole time. Okay, so when we walk, we use the wall posture check, we want our feet straight as possible going forward. And your feet are pretty good. I want you to do one thing, Shy, is with your left foot when you're against the wall, bring your foot in a little bit. Good, right there. Then bring the other foot out. So like my feet are right now. Bring my feet like my feet are right now. Like that. So bring your feet straight. The right foot straight too. Oh my God. Yeah, let's bring your feet straight then. Let's switch your angle. And then bring this foot a little bit further out here. Toward me. Right there. And bring this foot forward a little bit. Right there and out a little bit. Out that way. There we go. I want to focus so on that posture. They open up posture, okay? To walk that way? Not to walk, but to exercise this way. Oh, and bring this toe in a little bit more too. Bring your toe in this way. There we go. Does that feel weird to you? Yeah. Good. Weird means that your foot was, your foot was used to being, your left foot was used to being <laughs> out here to your outside mm -hmm. and rotating outward. And that's, again, like your brain, like your posture, right, Shai? If my posture, if my foot posture is just normally, my mind is telling me my foot is straight. I have to turn my foot in consciously initially until it re recalibrates my brain to see this is my normal. When I walk this way, it's easy to keep my body up because it doesn't close up my pelvis, keep my body up here instead of leaning forward. As I bring my feet pointed outwards, it makes my body lean forward to help me rebalance. Here, by keeping your feet straight, your toes straight, allows your body to stay back on your heels, keep your body upright. So would that be the right way to the in a little bit? Exactly. You're going to feel it. In a little bit? Exactly. Oh. And, and like, your, like your posture right now, before we start, it's going to feel weird and awkward for a little bit until we get used to it. You have to get used to this type of posture. Okay? Because it gets your legs stronger evenly, the front, back, and middle, and sides evenly, versus when we're like this, gets real tight on the outside, pushes our body forward. Here, it keeps our body straightened up the whole time. So you want to keep your body straightened up. Keep your body straightened up the whole time. And chin up. And chin up and back of where it feels uncomfortable. Work on all that. It's going to be a little work. It takes time, though. It'll take more than five times. It'll take like five, maybe four or five weeks. But four or five weeks, and if you maintain that, that becomes your new posture, new position with your feet and body, that becomes your normal. I have to it's going to feel weird for a while until you get used to it. And then you'll be, like be able to walk like that. It takes time. So to start over, let's go against the wall again. Good heels against the wall. And we're going to separate our feet, right? Hip width apart, a little bit wider. Separate your feet. And then bring that left toe in a little bit. And right toe in a little bit too. Right there. That's a normal foot position. Hips against the wall, shoulders and head. And then bring your hands here. Bring them out. Pinch the blades together. Bring them back in. Let's do four more times there. How's that feel? Yeah, okay. Good. Make sure you pinch the blades together. Right? Pinch them together. There we go. And two more. Good. All right. That feels okay? Yeah. Good. Now take a step forward for me. And walk normal for you. Now, this is normal that you telling me to do. Yes. You told me and that told me. Exactly. And it feels weird and awkward. I look down. <laughs> <laughs> it feels awkward because you're not used to it yet. Yeah. But that's the goal. So can we do that exercise for 30 seconds against the wall, 30 seconds, along with the wall fly, five times, and then walk with your feet straight. called the wall fly. I'm going to have to 
meaning of that you better be now. I mean, I just named them myself. I maybe called something else professional. I just you named just stuff. Made it up now. Exactly. <laughs> made it before four now. Okay. Do you want to do one more exercise? Want to do one more? Yes. Okay. I'll have you stand over here for a second. I'm going to demonstrate this one first, and I'll have you watch me, Shy. Can you turn around for me? Here, I'm going to have you do is I'm going to demonstrate first. What I want you to do is walk and just get in place right now. One step forward and on your heel. And I'll, I'll demonstrate first, Shy. I'll demonstrate first here. I want you to roll your feet back and forth. Heel and toe, right? Bring this. Yeah. Bring, so bring your left foot down, right toe up. Right heel up, sorry. Oh, I was going to say. Yeah, <laughs> you are correct. Yeah, it's gonna look great. So I'm going to start here okay. on my left heel, okay. and I'm with my with my left foot up, my right foot flat, right? Okay. I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate right forward up. and bring my left foot flat, and my right okay. foot, I'm going to go up on my toe. I'm going to go back again here, ending up with my right foot being flat, my left foot being on my heel, then rotate again. Toe. Exactly. Try it a couple times on the wall for me. Let's go that again. Let's go this way facing that way for me too. Whichever way you want to go. Yep. Okay. So we go here. There we go. Up on the start here first. There we go. Good. And then we're gonna we're gonna rotate now. There we go. Up and down. Okay. We also want to make sure every time shall we hold our body up though, right? Okay, he hold is the right one. Exactly. And the toe is the left one. Exactly. Rotate back and forth. But also, Shai, I want you to bring your head up. Use the wall for balance. Well, I was going to say that time to feel a little. So use the wall for balance. Keep your head up and shoulders up the whole time. Here. Heel. Now that you get the position, how you rotate your feet, the tempo. When I rotate my feet, I should have my head up and my chin up. And exactly. My On our shoulders back. We want to, we want to repeat our, our wall posture off the wall now. Exactly. We're going to add this to your routine. So here, up, and rotate backwards. Good. Up on your toe. Look at this. Perfect. Good. I'm using the wall. You're not even using the wall. Good. Head and shoulders up. Does that feel okay? Good. Let's switch sides. Let's face that way now. Bring that right foot here. Good. And then rotate forward. Head up. Shoulders up. Shoulders back. There we go. How does that feel? Well, I want to use, do something with my hands. Just put them against the wall. Don't go too crazy. <laughs> nice and easy today. Could that feel that okay? Should, yeah, that feels okay. Good. Okay, that's the plan. If we slowly move in that position this way. And that's the way you walk, too. You want to, you want to roll your feet when you walk. Right. This allows you to retrain your, your foot and your feet together to roll together, keeping your body up the whole time. We're going to compound exercise together as we move things around the right position. Okay, any questions about that? Am um, I getting the right foot, the left foot right? Go ahead, one more time to see. Okay, let's bring the right foot forward this time. Okay. Other foot, other foot. Okay. There we go, there, and then we go up on your heel, there we go, on your toe. Good, there we go. Good, rotate those feet. Does that feel okay? Yeah. Good. So I'm going to demonstrate. I should walk like that all the time. Exactly. So I'll demonstrate this one. Watch me this one. What I'm going to do is have you use the wall and start against the wall first here. Okay. We're not going to do the arms this time. We've done that before too. Here, what we're going to do is take a step forward, right? Just a little step forward throughout the wall. We're going to keep our head up, hand on the wall. We're going to bring our right foot forward. We're going to roll forward, then stop. Okay. What we're going to do is bring switch feet, bring your left foot forward on your on your heel, then roll forward, then stop. So when you stop, your left should be flat, left, left foot should be flat, right should be on your, on your right toes. Okay? Let's try two steps that way. See how that feels. Start out with your back That point, head back again, right? Always good posture first. That's the set, set point right there. Good. Take a step forward. Right there, use the wall for balance. Use the wall for balance. Head up, shoulders up. Good, roll your feet. And make sure you stop every time. Roll, stop. Good. Roll, stop. Good. Roll, stop. Perfect. 
Turn around. Let's do the other way, too. There we go. Good. That's okay. It's a wall. It's okay. That's we use the wall for balance. Roll. Stop. Good. Roll. Make sure we stop completely. Roll. Stop. Stop. Okay. Does that make sense why we stop? Other foot, foot going also gets your body to reset your posture. I got to start over again. It makes your body work harder. So when you're going all the whole time, it becomes he's, easy. He's, doing it. he's a professional over there. <laughs> <laughs> but the goal is can we can we stop to regain our balance and start again? Because when we're walking the whole time, your body will naturally calibrate, right? When we're stopping, it makes it makes it hard for the brain to calibrate your posture, it makes it happen faster. You're accelerating the training process. Good. You're doing perfect. Okay. It's time to go one more time this way too, Shy, for me. Come on, somebody. Do it with me. You're doing so well. You intimidate everybody else. Good. Head up. Good. I like the head being up. Good. Stop. Keep going. Go. Stop. Go, stop. Good, go, stop. I'm having you stop also. Relax for me. On your when your when your foot's up. So I want all the weight on that bottom foot where your flat foot is, all the weight there. Get your body to set that posture. I'm making your body stronger by doing this. Okay. Now I want to try doing this. A different next modification after you've done the roll stop. You're now going to do the roll stop with your eyes closed. Oh. And everyone says, oh. Everyone says so. But so I'll demonstrate first when I'm doing this, right? Always set your posture first, correct? Posture first. I'm going to do left foot forward. Roll, stop. Get my balance again. Same feet. Roll, stop. My balance. Roll, stop. Good. Eyes closed. Good on, on the wall. There we go. Roll, stop. Eyes closed. Good. Your balance. Roll, stop. Good. Roll. Stop. One more time. Roll. Stop. Good. Turn around. Keep your eyes open when you turn around. Not a, I'm kind of far, but I could catch you, hypothetically speaking. Okay. Close your eyes, though. No cheating. Good. Does that feel harder when your eyes are closed? Yes. From the audience, why do you think it's harder when your eyes are closed? Takes away your balance. But why, why is your balance harder when your eyes are closed? You're not using your vision for your balance anymore. You're not using a set, something in the, in the distance or even the floor that sets your balance visually. You have to use just your feet and your body's position to maintain your balance. If your body's here and you're trying to maintain your balance leaning forward, you're going to be throwing yourself off. And leaning back and doing it allows you to use your feet and your body that you can't see as a way to balance your body again and calibrate your, pal your posture faster. Make your body strong in that better position. Are you tired, Shy, or are you good? I know. Need a water break? I think I just need to sit down. Grab the seat. You did a good job. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good work. Question. Yes. If I walk, can you go grab the seat? If I walk toward you the way I usually walk, yes. I just notice that my feet hurt uh -huh. like that. Mm -hmm. And you're saying I should try to make them straighter. Make your feet straight. So they're going to be straight this way instead of being out yeah. to your sides. Good shot. Grab the seat. Grab the seat. The other thing is tricky. We'll see out of your way. Down. Yes. Come on over. I can't see you from over there. Uh, uh, the no. camera can't see you from okay. over there. Well, the other thing I was going to say is if I close my eyes, mm -hmm. I really have a problem. I really need to. So you need to focus on getting that 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 strength in because it's a, it's a trained reflex. It's training your brain to use your your sensory your your load on your feet as a way to balance, not just your vision. So use the wall for me. Use the wall. Oh, right here and go this way for me. So 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 yeah, turn around and scoot back against the wall all the way. All the way. That's the wall first. Set your posture first. Do you give classes anywhere? I do them here once a month. This is my free entertainment for the month. <laughs> it entertains you and me at the same time. That's what it is. And what I do, I put everything I can. It depends on how much access you have online to emails. I put everything on YouTube. 
All the videos I do here, I record and put them on YouTube people that can't make the class. When they want to watch them later to recalibrate everything, they can watch them later if they want to. So if you want to, if you're not, if you don't do my, if you're not on my email list already, I get a piece of paper for you and get my email, go to my email list and email you later this talk. That works for you. Okay? okay. So let's go here. All right, sir. If I stand here normally, yep. my little uh -huh. shoulder bones are hitting there. Yes. And, and I could fall over. And so now I'm trying to remember the... Uh -huh. And separate your feet more. Keep your feet separated. Oh, okay. And then bring your toes a little bit straighter. Bring this toe in. There we go. Good. That feel weird? I'm going to start walking. Start walking, but when you walk, take a step off the wall first. There. Good. And then slowly use the wall for balance. Go forward. Yeah. Stop. Forward. Stop. Good. Head up. Head up. Oh, yeah. There we go. This is I'm the watching, process. I'm watching where I'm it's, it's not going to move on you. Good. Oh, okay. That feel okay? Yeah. Can you do this once a month? Once a month. So if I came back once a month. Well, I'll every every third Tuesday month, unless I have a medical emergency myself or somebody else, or if I forget I have amnesia. <laughs> sometimes it happens oh, once in a once a year. Sometimes third Wednesday. Third one, third Tuesday. Third Tuesday. It's interesting. It's easier to keep them straight if you're holding them on the. And using the wall initially is good to go here, right? So I'm going to go here, hold, here, hold. Here, hold. As you get used to it, because now your feet are used to where your body is, you're able to really know where your body is, then you want to do, last part is, this will be fun, is going backwards, hold, 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 hold. Okay? If you do with your eyes open, what happens is your body can't see behind you, so you're kind of stuck going, okay, what do I do? It keeps your body more upright as a way to balance your body. Okay, so let's go backwards. Okay. Wow. There we go. Because what happens once in a while, we have to you know, we take a step backwards, mm -hmm. we lose our balance. This trains your body to catch, to catch yourself. Does that feel okay? Yeah. You keep your eyes. What's interesting is it's easier to keep the feet straight. Mm -hmm. and, you, and your head up because you can't worry about what's behind you. Keep your head because like, I'm not going to worry about behind me. Let's turn around and do it one more time. Now his head is up. He's, he practices every day. He well, walks about it, five it, miles a day. When I'm thinking about it, I'm, I'm keeping those straight ahead. Yep. Okay. But ordinarily, i will be walking like uh -huh. this. <laughs> <laughs> and when you walk, if you can walk with more of a, a roll with your feet, that's easier on your knees, hips, and back. Yeah. When I step here, all that pressure yeah. goes to my knees, my ankle, my hip, and my back. If I roll my feet, I'm using a natural spring in my foot to get that to flex, to get to really absorb the impact of my of my walking. I've noticed there's something else though in the I've been watching myself. Yes. But I noticed that the feet are kind of crossing like a duck. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's how you lose it. I didn't know that I was doing it. Yeah. But when I saw you do it, that keeps you balanced. Uh -huh. Everyone's different. So I always start out, and that's one thing too. I start with people doing more of a wider stance over time, okay? Back and forth, stop, back and forth, stop. Then over time, as you're more comfortable, and then you want to do the last thing is, is going to do the modification, is now using the wall, going heel to toe. Yeah. Stop, heel to toe. What, what happens when you go heel to toe, foot by the other versus feet foot wide, what happens? What's the difference? You have a narrow center of gravity here, or you have a wider center of gravity. Easier balance here when your feet are wide, harder balance when your feet are narrow. Okay, so try that and see. It's walking like a duck, because I happen to have seen ducks walking in a pond. <laughs> there you go, there you go. So let's try doing this. Again, stopping to here. Heel to toe, stop. Heel to toe, stop. Heel to toe, stop. How's that feel? Well, oh, balanced. Well, good. That's how you train your balance. I want you to feel off balance. Not <laughs> sure stop, make sure you stop, though. Make sure you stop in between, right? The feeling off balance is easy for me. <laughs> let's go one more way. But this time, let's walk this way when we do this. Let's stop every time. Hold it. Okay. Stop for about a second. All right. Walk that tightrope. Didn't I see a new tightrope today? See what happens? 
Yeah. Head up. <laughs> yes, use the wall. Use the wall. I'm going to have to practice more. There we go. It's, he, I can push him because he does. he's very strong and does every day. I might balance him up with the wall. So how do we train what we're doing now? How do we train what we're doing to slowly go from where we are? Okay, so let's walk through what we've done so far, right? Okay. Just to review. So far we've done this one, the shot, which is ironically because she was up here for most of the time. Against the wall, 30 seconds. Your heels is against the wall. Heels. Your shoulders are as mm -hmm. far as against the wall as you can get them. Yes. And, and your chin is against the wall. So straight back with the chin, yes. put that against the wall if you can. Yeah. How about your arms? <laughs> Tight. Tight and also and back with your palms open facing out. Okay, once you've done it for 30 seconds, then at that point you can go right to a wall fly, right? Here. Wall fly allows your shoulder blades back here to pinch. Hold it, relax. Hold it, relax. Get these back here to pinch your shoulder blades when you're against the wall to hold that better position. With exercise, you calibrate that posture faster. When you open your arms, mm -hmm. you want that to pinch back there. Yeah, exactly. When you open your arms, when you bring your hands out to your sides, allows your back muscles to pinch back there, the shoulder blades to pinch exactly shy. Okay? You go back here, pinch the blades together about five times. Once you do that five times, come off the wall. What you're going to do is take a couple steps. What do you do this time? Stop with your head up, right? Head up, stop, head up, stop the whole time. Okay? When you come back to the wall, same thing, four to five steps, head up, posture up, weight on your heels, Body up this way. Nice relaxed posture, nice relaxed strider, okay, when you're walking. And that you're going to do is focus on using the wall. Now roll your feet back and forth, heel to toe, heel to toe. Okay? So for example, now on my left, on my left heel, up, hold, and then come back, bring that heel down. Okay, back and forth with my feet. After I've done that about four to five times, I'm going to do is start walking that way, going forward only. Head up, body up, keeping that posture the whole time. Roll my feet, take a step, like I'm in a wedding party. At that point, other step. Keep walking, rolling my feet forward the whole time. Then that four to five times. And I'm going to do is walk backwards the same way. Head up the whole time. Roll my feet backwards. The whole time. Okay? Again, maintain that feet position being straight the whole time. What I'm going to do from there is now use my feet as a way to maintain my balance, not my vision. I'm going to close my eyes here. So using a wall, I roll my feet again, my eyes closed, head up, body up the whole time. Hold it, stop. Roll my other foot, hold it, stop. Roll my opposite foot, going about four to five times. Okay? And don't do that two or three times. When you're used to that, then keeping your eyes closed the whole time. Now go backwards, rolling your feet with your body up, posture up the whole time too. We take a step back, with, I'm going to move my right foot first, on my right toes, roll the right foot back so it goes flat, left foot comes back naturally, keep going all the way. Stop, and stop because it helps maintain your balance, maintains that training of your balance too. Got one more step I think, right there, look at that. Any questions so far? Once I've done that with my feet, at a normal width position, with good gravity, and good balance, I'm going to just focus on now doing heel to toe with my eyes open first, going forward. Heel to toe, all the way. Heel to toe, heel to toe, walking on a line if you want to. Head up, shoulders up, body up the whole time. And then from there, let me change the angle of the camera too in a second. I'm going to do is walk back with my eyes open again. Heel to toe, heel to toe. Heel to toe, rolling my feet the whole time, head up, body up. You get easier to maintain your posture up when you're walking backwards because it feels like a better balance to you. You can't use your eyes on this one to look behind you. If you do, you're not human, sorry. Okay? Now I'm going to do the last thing is, now I've worked on my posture with my feet walking a straight line. Now I'm doing my eyes closed. Can we do the eyes closed? That's when your feet and your body has to take over your balance, not just your vision. Okay? So eyes closed, walking a straight line, roll my feet, stop. Roll my feet, stop. Roll my feet, heel to toe. Heel to toe. Heel to toe. This will seem almost like the same thing. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Shai. 
theater. And then, because really, because my feet are so close together, you're not going to go up too far. But you do want to do, if you can, like you're saying, Shai, is making sure you're doing this to where you're coming forward. Let your feet come up, so it'll go up on your toes. Here, go up on your toes again. Good idea, Shai. Everybody catch that. Here, too. Roll your feet up. And roll your feet up the whole time. Okay? Last thing you do is go backwards now. Same thing, eyes closed. Feet on a straight line, heel to toe. Here, back. So it's going to go up on your toe first and roll up your foot backwards on your heel. Nice and flat. Here, nice and flat. Nice and flat. And nice and flat. Okay? Any questions? Can you do that walking fast, walk and roll your feet? Can you, you must say, Claire. Yep, you say. If you do your toes, you're automatically okay. Yeah, if you can get your toes, you're okay. Right. So how do you... How you repeat this, whatever works for you, whatever's the hard part of what you're doing, work on that, that weakness. That's why walking, when you're walking normally, it feels normal to you. When you roll your feet, it feels normal to you. Okay, so when you're walking fast and normally, you still roll your feet. Like exactly, you still want to roll your feet the whole way. Oh, okay. When you, you roll your feet. You know if you're doing it wrong. Said, yeah, your feet will let you know. Yeah, because I went walking one day and I was, I knew I had a, a, a short length of time. Huh? So I was, I just charged out walking and I, my ankles hurt and I just had to stop and slow down. And that's the thing is when you do it the right way, I people do it, shy especially when they start out, maybe you walk around their room for one minute. Because it's about form and technique first, mm -hmm. not how fast you go or how far you're going to go. But by doing it a short distance where you're doing it the right way, your brain likes that better. Mm -hmm. If you do it the fast, you do it fast the wrong way, and you're making it stay worse oh. or not a good position. Oh. Doing it slow, start with a minute. That feels good. And then two minutes, and three minutes, four minutes. In the kindergarten yard, we had a metal mm -hmm. bar mm -hmm. across, and it was raised not very high. Yeah. And the kids were to walk on it. It's play. It's fun yes, for them. It was play. It's and balance. They did, they did it with their eyes closed and backwards. And they learned how to do that. They're sponges. But we forget that because we sit in a chair all day. We don't spend enough time playing. I've gotten out of the way and I should have been going. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little bit funny. Long haul. Long haul. Long haul. Long haul. Long haul. Use a wall the whole time. Make sure it's clear, obviously, if you use the wall the whole time. It's okay, but if, if you have four to five steps you can work with, that's all you need. Four to five steps, turn around, do it again. Until you get tired. Next day, do a little bit more, a little bit more. And I should feel it with the toe in. All of it. It's going to feel, when you bring your, when your toes are initially out, more out versus pointing out versus pointing straight, it's going to feel weird on your legs and your hips. It's going to feel uncomfortable, maybe a little sore. Your body's not used to it. Body means time to get used to it first. When you're used to that, at that point, once you feel, I tell my patients, when you feel like it's uncomfortable, a little sore because you're having a better position, you're having, I make you these exercises at home, all these exercises at home, I go, you're welcome. Now your body's adjusting that better position, it has to get stronger in the back, stronger in the legs, and a little bit looser in the front and tighter in the back here to make your body hold that better position naturally and normally. It should feel uncomfortable, maybe a little sore, but not painful. Would you keep on doing it if it's sore? Take it, I would do a little bit less, but keep doing it. So if you do it for 10 minutes, do it for 5 minutes. If you do it twice a day, do it maybe once a day. Let your body adapt that position first. You might be doing it too much. It needs more time to adapt that better position first. Yes? What's that muscle that runs down? Is it TK or something? A TFL band? Yes. Or centrifugal lot if you're French. That's both, both sides. Both sides. They're, they're a very tight tendon like a guitar string, mm -hmm. so they get very tight. So if you bring the foot out, it gets tighter. It makes, when you bring your foot out, it makes the outside muscle tighter, TFL band, makes your inside knee weaker. If I'm walking like this, here, the inside pressure of the knee has been more affected. Here, when your foot's straight, the whole knee takes the impact like it should, from the alignment of the knee, versus here, it throws the alignment off. Push on the groove, they call it. People come with, with knee pain, I make sure they bring their, when they see them standing like this. If I have a knee hurt, I'm like, because of that, they go, what? Your feet. So bring your feet in, it feels weird until you get used to that better position. And in ballet, they make you stand like that. Yeah, I didn't do ballet, though. <laughs> My mom made me do sports or something. What's she thinking? Guy thing. 
Did he show your position? Yes. Good. Hmm? Okay. So let's review that real quick. So heels against the wall, feet straight, right? About shoulder width apart. Heels against the wall, feet straight. Then one of your hips against the wall too. Get mentioned to you before, keep a small, keep that fist of your lower back, little space in your lower back the whole time. So the back of your shoulders here should be touching the wall. That point, the back shoulder here, back of your outside shoulder should feel foot hits the wall, touch the wall. Elbow against the wall and also head against the wall if that's possible. And then allow your hands to fall so the hands are open, facing out away from you. That's a normal standing position. Anatomy wise, that's how you should stand. But wherever you are, comfortable, go backwards and then start there. In that better position, now you're in a better position where you were before, that becomes your normal. Go back a little bit more when you're ready. To adapt the, to that standard posture, give yourself time. It may take two, three weeks, it may take four, five, six weeks. Sorry. How much you want to work on it will tell you how much you can actually change that over time. All right, any questions? The big difference is when you're in your home, you're safe. Uh -huh. When you go out on the sidewalk, that's a different thing. So when you're walking in the sidewalk, if you really train your body up here, look down over your nose, not with your eyes. Is that possible or is that not possible? Uh. They, I, somebody made, has shown me these glasses where they have a prism in there. Where you look straight, it looks straight down. It looks just weird. But the glasses are meant for you to look down here so you had a book or, or your phone or down the ground versus here so it makes your, it kind of takes your head up. But by training your body so you can still look down, but rolling your feet allows you to maintain that balance over time. Alright, any questions? Well, my question actually goes, I said neck pain relief and my really occurs when I'm trying to sleep at night with a pillow on my back. And, and I was wondering if you were going to touch on that or something. Was it neck pain or was it, was it what was the topic that I've I have I don't, I have neck pain. A sloping no, pillow. No, that's, I, that's the top of my list. So it's everything. And part of doing the pillow too is making sure your head's relaxed in the middle of the pillow and not, see the pillow, pillow's here, right? Yes. Pillow, rectangle, pillow. I'm going to use a, an air diagram, whatever you yeah. want to call it. You want to be in the middle of the pillow, not on the, on the perimeters. If I'm, if I'm in the middle of the pillow, then my head sits in the middle where it's relaxed, versus the side it sits like this. And you want a pillow that's going to be medium weight if possible, not a very hard pillow. You want that cushion to support your head, so the back of your head here is supported, not here where it's pushing you forward. Does that make sense? Hmm. I see that hmm right there. You want it, you want the pillow to where the outside of the pillow, the, the primitive pillow, the side pillow is here on your on your shoulders, so your head sits in the middle of the pillow. I've been experimenting with a sloping pillow that I got at a you know yeah. store. How's it working for you? It. Sometimes it seems okay, but it, it's no. <laughs> it forces tricky. your head one way, this way, and, if, and this the question way is how far back up to be on it. Do you want the small of the back at the bottom of the pillow, or do you want it? I, I want to see. I want to. I want to. You put the pillow there, right? Your head there, right? Relax your head, and see if these muscles tighten up. If they stay loose, that's a good position for you. If they're tight, you have to adjust your position. If your head's here and try to force your head straight back, that's way too much at one time. You have to get your head to slowly come backwards. So you may want to start here, 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 here. Some people sleep with three pillows. I have like a variety this. of pillows I've been trying. I don't, I can't breathe that way. What if you sleep with your head to the side? As long as your head's relaxed. As long as, if I have a pillow on my side of here, as long as these muscles on my opposite side of my neck are still loose, I'm okay with it. But if your head goes to sleep tight, you have to be careful because then you're gonna, re, you're gonna over tighten it, and your weight could be even worse. I had someone come in a couple years ago, she bought a Turkish pillow, Turkish pillow for $200. Made her neck extremely worse. It was completely flat almost and very cushiony, very fluffy. So her head went too far back, made her neck strain even more. So wherever you are, can you go back 10%? Allow things to relax there, then over time go back more and more by doing your exercise, doing your stretch, by getting your posture back here where it feels more comfortable. 
Yeah. And then I got diagnosed with uh, acid reflux, mm -hmm. and a friend said, oh, you have to raise your bed with, with bricks, and you have to get mm -hmm. sleep on three pillows, and I, I Was this a good friend or a friend you don't like very well, much? I don't know. It, it worked <laughs> for her, but it did, sure wasn't my way of living. Acid reflux, if it's a postural issue, your, your chest cavity has become tunched over, so you lose motility in your intestinal tract and, and also your stomach. I open your body up, allows you to get motility back, circulation back in your intestinal tract. So you want to do is put a pillow back here on, say this is a normal bed, to lean your body over that pillow to open up your chest cavity for about maybe one to two minutes at a time. Oh. But you're, yeah, the brick thing is more of, okay, that's, come on, a little report. I know she did. It's hard to get bricks these days. Bricks aren't very easy to get. <laughs> they don't travel very well. <laughs> you fiddle. Well, yep, Shipping and handling alone, you can handle like back. 30 bucks. Hi. Shipping and handling is expensive these days, even with UPS. Wait a second, should I go ahead? Because there's pressure in there. When the neck doesn't, when a joint doesn't move long enough, this could be the neck and elbow, wherever it is, to there's a pressure in the joint. It means the motion to release that pressure. Because sometimes it doesn't move at all. Because it's not moving at all. So when the joints, see the problem with our, my elbow is one hinge joint. Okay. I'm going to feel if there's a problem there. Problem in my neck, you have seven joints in your neck. If one joint gets stuck, other ones will take over. They'll compensate for a while. And over time, that other joint gets, gets stuck too. It's a domino effect. So the problem is one joint gets stuck, yeah, you'll be okay. Two, three gets stuck, you start feeling it, it's already causing a problem for a long time. Sometimes months or years. So when, you're, when your spine is in normal position, normal curve in the spine leaning backwards, curve in your neck, curve in your lower back, curve in your mid back, that curve allows your bones to stay moving, stay in normal motion. If your body starts hunching forward, at that point, that forward posture, the hunch posture, makes you want to lock up whether you lose the motion. So with neck position, with body position, you want to keep that wall posture, or try to get back to there where the joints stay loose versus being stuck because your posture is off, the bones straighten out versus maintaining that curve. All right. I've answers for everything, people. Maria. The times that I'm turning, mm -hmm. I can hear it grinding. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the pressure in your joints because the joints are too locked. The joint has a normal position here, right? Yeah. With a disc in between, a little disc, with a little washer, protect the joint overall. When it's leaning backwards, that joint stays free and mobile. As it starts coming up where it locks in play, more straight, more of a perched spine, at that point it doesn't move. That grinding out because these joints get closer and closer and closer, they start getting that pressure in there to cause feel like it's grinding or sandpaper in there. Or sand. Okay, you use your wall to set your posture back here to get that curve back in your spine. Over time, you get your body to sit back here versus being here. Because here leads to what? When you hunch forward, it leads to what? A cane. Then a walker. What's after a walker? Anybody? Come on. What's after a walker? Wheelchair. wheelchair. I'll spell it for you, wheelchair. Can you put heat on it? You can't. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. Yes. One, one more thing. If I do get my head moderately relaxed and I fall asleep, then my mouth drops open and I'm breathing through my throat. Yes. I wake up and I'm a really dry throat. And so, so get some tape. <laughs> Duct tape from your chin to your forehead. <laughs> I've got a new mouthpiece I'm going to try. Yeah. It. But that's the thing is, you get it, it's, that's up to you at that point, but having your normal position of your body allows your body to stay relaxed. When you relax and sleep well, what happens? You wake up recharged. Wake up recharged, you have a better next day. When people that can't sleep very well, what happens? They go into an anxious or a stressed state, the body becomes stressed and tight. They have acid reflux because of that. They have heart palpitation because of that. They have anxiety because of that too. So when you get your sleep and relax, that's my first time for a patient when they're feeling better. When they're sleeping better, that tells your body's starting to relax again. When they're sleeping worse, that tells your body's still in a stress state. So my question I ask my patients is, how are you sleeping now, maybe a week in the care, two weeks being treatment? For, for me, what I do, at that point, see how they feel that problem. I'm sleeping better, I wake up a recharge, great again to a relaxed state. Your body's going here, not being stressed the whole time. It's hard for a small person to find a pillow. Yeah, but you fit small really places, huge. though. It's a, it's a catch-22. You fit in small places. I can't, I, it's in a chair, I'm like, it's stuck. 
<laughs> Everyone's different though. And if for you, I'd almost use even like not a throw pillow, but something a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. more of a custom pillow for you, because, but make sure it's still soft. Have one that has water in it. So Whatever works for you. As long as that pillow stays here, that, that edge of the pillow is on the on your shoulders, mm -hmm. not your head. That point your head can fall back into the pillow, supported or or cupped by the pillow itself, versus being stuck on the edge leaning forward. I have some U shaped pillows that I have. You have a plethora of pillows, my friend. Yeah. You have a lot of pillows. Yeah. Try it. You could do a do do videos just on your pillows. It's, it's my philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever even, works for you. Even those travel pillows are too much. It is, and, and, and those are tough. Yeah. They're meant for you to hold your head up when you're sitting up, not right. when you're leaning back. Right. That's too much. The exercise I got from Yes. Yeah. Yeah, neck position is important too. And you want you want to be able to turn left, hold left, turn right, back and forward. But rotation is tough because sometimes when you rotate, it can make you want to pinch or tighten up. So be careful with the rotation. And what I would do is hold that position to hold this position for maybe five seconds or so, and that would give it time to stretch out. When you hold something, a position versus doing going back and forth, you hold a position that's more of the ligaments stretching out, not just muscle stretching out. When you do a, mo a motion, that's more muscle. When you hold a position. That's more of a ligament stretch. All right? I got to go. We got people in my office for me. Get out of here. I'll see you next month.